Welcome to Desk Geek. It is time for the distribution video I've been putting off telling you it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Well, it's finally here. It's finally here. My observations on the various distributions out there. So uh, a couple ground rules. Number one, thank you to the open source community, the men and women who spend hundreds and hundreds of hours putting together these incredible distributions that I get the honor and privilege of being able to utilize and be able to get my work done on and saving people lots and lots of money and time. So no matter what I say in these comments, know that uh, this work uh, overall and all the distros that I tried are incredible when you think about the amount of work that goes into creating something like an entire operating system and determining what packages, how things look, the design, the layout, absolutely amazing. So. There are a lot of Linux distributions. Some people look at that as a good thing. Some people look at that as a bad thing. You know, some people compare it to kind of the Windows 2000 world where you had like nine different versions you could choose from. Other people like the idea of it because it gives you a lot of choice. And really what I found at the end of the day is I like that there's a lot of distributions out there. Maybe there's some that need to be collapsed to narrow in some of the confusion, but we'll get more into that in our final thoughts video. Um, so none of these distributions that I'm going to talk about were installed in a virtual machine and every single one of them was installed on a formatted hard drive. So the idea is to get, to give, to have given everything a really solid, clean slate to start off from the installation process to actually utilizing it live. It's also important to note that my main focus over everything else was video production. So audio and video production is the primary focus of what I was using these distributions for. They were on all of my machines, so I used them for everything like gaming, writing documents, everything. But the thing that I focused on was that, and that may not be your focus. So therefore my points on some of these distributions may be mute. So this video is not meant to say this one's better than this one, blah, blah, blah. This is just my favorite, my observations. Take it for what you want. I'm not interested in a battle of what's the best distribution and what's not. That kind of takes away from the beautiful community that is Linux, honestly, getting into that type of stuff. So I'm not going to go there. Uh, number two, I think it's important to note that uh, a lot of people talk about Linux revitalizing an old machine, and certainly it's fantastic for that. But I wanted to do this challenge on my beast, what I lovingly call the beast, the i7 Intel with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 uh, RAM with an NVIDIA 1070 with an NVMe SSD hard drive. I mean, we're talking about a very, very powerful machine because Linux is not just good at revitalizing old machines. It's good at showing off the cutting edge of new machines, or at least that's what I wanted to test. And what I was looking for in the distributions, can it game, can it stream, can it render, can it do 3D graphic rendering? All of that are the type of things that I was looking for from being able to develop intro screens, text, render 20, 30 minute videos. Um, it, has not only met my expectations Linux has, but blown it away. It is so good for powerful cutting edge machines as much as it is. And that's why most of your supercomputers run Linux as much as it is any other machine. This computer ate through rendering 15, 20 minute videos like nothing, like butter. It just cut through them, handed them back to me and said, please, sir, can I have some more? It didn't hesitate. It didn't heat up. I didn't hear my fans spinning. It was just like, num, 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 num. Here's your video next. I mean, it's incredible the power of Linux and how everything is working together so solidly. So wanted to get those things out of the way. So let's talk about the distributions. You'll see here I have distro watch up. Uh, I'm just showing here that your top distributions are generally Mint, Debian, Ubuntu, OpenSUSE, Elementary, Manjaro, and Fedora. And if you look at the last 12 months, you're going to see a very similar. They may switch rankings a little bit. Mint, Debian, Ubuntu, OpenSUSE, Manjaro, Fedora, Elementary is a little further down in this one. But you can see for the most part, those are your top distributions. Those actually happen to be the ones that most of you recommended me to check out. There are hundreds of distributions for you to look at, so there's no way I could go through them all. These are the ones I was able to touch within the 30 days. 
So first up, we're going to talk about Mint. Uh, I loved Mint. When I installed Mint on my laptop and my desktop, I instantly fell in love with not only the beginning, the presentation of Mint. So when you first see it, you don't feel like you're going back in time. You feel like you're kind of going forward in operating system futures. It's absolutely gorgeous. It, navigating it is simple. It's intuitive. It makes sense from going from a window user to a Linux environment. Uh, the package management system was on point. It was familiar. It was not hard to figure out or to navigate. Um, the community support within Mint is top notch. I mean, they just there's just so much support from the forums to RC chat. Uh, beautiful, beautiful people there. Issues uh, that I had, I did have issues with losing Wi-Fi and waking from sleep on my laptop. So when I would close the lid on my laptop, go away for a while, come back, open the lid, I lost Wi-Fi connection. And then, um, let's see, Caden Live. I had some theme issues with Caden Live where the theme, the default theme removed the actual video bar that you would move across when you're going to cut or playing videos on the bottom portion and I could not get it back and it happened both on my desktop and laptop. Um, so th those were kind of issues that I ran into with it and I'm not sure what caused that, probably some type of theme setting or something along those lines. Uh, but in any case, those are the only two issues in running that that I ran into. Uh, otherwise, the applets on the screen are beautiful. It had no none of the issues with the 1070 mouse lock when you were installing it like Ubuntu had. Um, and it performed very, very well with gaming. Mint is definitely new user friendly. It's a beautiful thing. Definitely deserves to be at the top where it is of the distribution chain. In my opinion, it's a very, very strong uh, distro. And that's why people so love it so much. Uh, Ubuntu, this is where we started. Definitely new user friendly. I think the default look to me is a little dated. Um, it's an incredible community. You probably have the most forums and answers and things that I found around Ubuntu doing Google searching. That means it's the most indexed answers for Linux issues out there, generally Ubuntu based. Uh, I did have constant little errors popping up in 16.10. Nothing that crashed the system, nothing that stopped me from working, nothing that kept anything from going forward. It was just something with the proprietary drivers, which they fixed last week because I haven't had the issue since. So there were, was some issue last week and that got resolved very quickly, which is kudos to the Linux community. Uh, great overall compatibility with the hardware. I mean, it's compatible with just about every damn thing you throw at it. Uh, great compatibility with Windows work groups. So if you have networked Windows hard drives and things uh, like I do off of my router, it sees them, accesses them, no problem. Printer set up, no problem. Uh, the compatibility for software, everything is pretty much compatible with Ubuntu, and it's incredible for gaming. It does a very, very good job. Um, so now we'll talk about some flavors of Ubuntu, because there's a couple flavors or variances to um, the GUIs that are set up over top of the Ubuntu shell. So Kubuntu, uh, which I think is KDE-based, is uh, I had a lot of issues with this one with audio. Uh, now, I don't use standard audio systems, so understand I've got a DBX-286S uh, preamp processor. I've got a USB 2i2. I have an amplifier, FIO amplifier. I utilize, you know, a lot of different things, clip speakers than other people probably have on their system. But I had some issues uh, with audio and losing audio in there, but I was able to overcome them. Um, doing some simple terminal commands. Search often picked wrong items. So when we were doing, when I was in here doing a search for a specific package, I would put in a name and it would pull up something else. So I wasn't, I didn't think that was uh, too intuitive. The icon hints were blank in applications, um, specifically GIMP and Caden Live, and I think that was theme oriented. Those two programs, especially Caden Live, seem to be very susceptible to themes. Uh, lots of customization options. So I. I mean, it's so customizable. Often I was turning on things that I didn't even know I turned on. It just, it's got so many options to configure and change. If you are somebody that likes tweaking, Kubuntu is definitely something to check out because it's, it's tweak happy. You can go nuts on tweaking and making everything look the way you want. Um, Ubuntu Studio. So unexpected contender here. And I absolutely love 
Ubuntu Studio. This is my favorite distribution for what I do of all distributions right now. It comes packed with everything. It is a video and audio editing package distribution based off of Ubuntu 16.10, and I believe they have the 16.04 long-term support option as well. I mean, there is over $600 to $1,000 probably of if you were to buy this or buy it on a Windows platform of software that's included with Ubuntu Studio. Um, the Samba network compatibility, printer compatibility, it did have the NVIDIA 1070 driver lock issue, which again, it doesn't stop anything. You just have to tab in and choose the proprietary driver and you're good to go. And uh, I just think for audio and video creators, it's amazing. Meaning I can go get a computer right now, install Ubuntu Studio, make a video and have it published probably within an hour and a half, like from start to finish because it's just so, it has everything you need and more. I've learned about so many different packages from 2D animators and things like that that just comes standard with this distribution. It's rock solid, it works well. All my audio equipment worked right out of the box. I just love Ubuntu Studio. I think it's such a fantastic distribution. Ubuntu Mate, and it's very user new user friendly, certainly. Ubuntu Mate is more of an intermediate, so very clean, uh, well, I started with um, clean formatted hard drive, but I had many issues with installing Ubuntu Mate, and I don't know why. Specifically, it seemed to surround the Grub interface constantly airing out, and I don't know if it's because I had so many other distros, but I can tell you when I stuck Ubuntu Studio in, boom, it was, you know, it fixed Grub or whatever was wrong and, and booted right in. So I'm not sure what happened there because every installation with these Ubuntu should be pretty much based on the same portfolio. So I'm not sure what took place there. Uh, very nice presentation of the desktop environment, very clean. Um, I did have some issues once I got it installed with resource management and the menu systems. Um, so I didn't like that the menu, I believe, had no search option up here. You could install one, um, obviously, and add a search function, but it didn't have one pre-built in. I didn't think the menu system was particularly intuitive. I was not a fan of the um, resource usage on there. And I've actually watched other YouTube videos where individuals mention the resource usage. Uh, it seemed to utilize a lot of resources specifically for my laptop. This machine doesn't really care. It's like whatever. But uh, the laptop seemed to really kind of hang uh, in in doing anything like in Caden Live or OpenShot and things like that. So I wasn't a huge fan of Ubuntu Mate, but I think it's more of an advanced package on top of Ubuntu than probably what I was prepared for. So uh, we'll just leave it at that because I know a lot of you love it. So do not take my word and not try it and say, well, he didn't like it, so I'm not going to give it a try. Just because it didn't you know, meet my uh, expectations doesn't mean it's not going to completely blow you away. Clearly, people love Ubuntu Mate. Uh, Manjaro. Manjaro is one of my favorite uh, as well. So default interface, though, I, I've got to knock it. I hate the fact that it starts with that emerald green color that looks like a 70s couch. If you know what I'm talking about, those velvet couches, it's like this emerald green wallpaper. And I know that means nothing. It's a wallpaper. You can change it in a second. But it's just that first impression. You know, when you're booting up your machine, you've got this new operating system. You want to feel like you're in something that's surpassing what's out there, kind of like Mint gives to you. And what's funny is you can just go right into the default theme settings and they have these beautiful default wallpapers with Manjaro's logo in 3D and just absolutely, you know, dark and light themes that are gorgeous and grab you. And instead they preload it with this ugly emerald green. I, I don't know, but in any case, it's highly customizable. You've got rolling updates, the best driver support for computers out there. The package interface wasn't familiar to me coming from Debian, but it's very powerful. Uh, the search is incredibly powerful on it. Uh, I did have some issues with the theme in OpenShot blocking out text uh, due to the default theme settings, but that was quickly overcome. The terminal and package control were more powerful, uh, obviously, but they were slightly more complex to me with the AUR uh, package management for the unofficial uh, software that you could install. I did have issues with Windows workgroups and randomly losing connection on both my desktop and laptop to Samba network drives, like the hard drives hooked up to my router. So um, 
I was able to get them back, but there was it, it just kind of kept popping up every once in a while where I couldn't connect, and I haven't had that issue within Ubuntu, so not sure what's causing that. Uh, did not have the NVIDIA 1070 mouse lock issue. Incredibly strong gaming platform. You guys saw me stream uh, games from Manjara to the Steam Link box, etc. It played games like a dream. Uh, I also ran into issues. I didn't like the audio interface, and it did have some issues with my 2i2 where it would turn it off if it wasn't being in use. So if I wasn't listening to something actively or talking, my USB light on my 2i2 Scarlet audio interface would just turn off. And then once I activated it again and went into Pulse Audio, it would reactivate it. Ubuntu Studio used this Pulse Audio, and I don't have that issue, so I'm not sure why it's an issue there, but probably some type of interference. And the only one I'll talk bad about is Elementary OS, and that's because it surprised me. I've used Elementary OS in the past, and I absolutely loved it. I thought it was beautiful. It was very Mac-like, um, very gorgeous interface, and it still is. But the App Center kept crashing anytime you type in more than two letters, and it's a known issue that's out there on the boards. Uh, the GoPro and mounted drives had no default privileges. I felt like I was in Windows 8 again, where everything I was doing was asking me for permissions to do. The default software it loads was very limited and sparse, which some people may like, but I don't. Uh, trying to get a USB creator loaded on a thing was a battle in itself. There's no default program like US, like uh, Ubuntu and others have. Etcher wouldn't install on it, um, so I just had to go through the terminal and use the USB creator GTK. I thought the search and options were incredibly limited. Uh, elementary was absolutely the worst experience of the distros. It was the only one that um, I was really shocked to because I think there's so much potential there. And I don't know what's happened, if it's just I hit them at the worst time possible where they had some errors they haven't patched yet or what. Because, I, I've, like I said, I've had good luck with Elementary OS in the past. So, that's it. That's my review of the distros. I know some of you are going to be pissed and be like, you're an idiot, this one's the best. And I'm sorry you feel that way. But again, keep in mind, I'm just doing this video for my workflow the things I like to do and at my experience level. So I'm not some super Linux user. I'm very much, you know, at the beginner, in between beginner and intermediate, probably somewhere in between there. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, Ubuntu Studio, Mint, Manjaro are my favorite distros out of the ones I tried. Ubuntu Studio taking number one there and they're in order there for my favorite, um, my top three favorites. So Ubuntu Studio, Mint, Manjaro. So leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if I completely missed the mark and I'm just wrong, wrong, wrong. Let me know if you've had great experiences with Ubuntu Studio, Mint, or Manjaro, or any of the other distros we talked about, or feel free to uh, add in some other distros that you think would completely blow me away. So until then, until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Subscribe, thumbs up, watch the video.